Well, I'm going to have to start this week on some bad news, which I guess you're probably used to by now. But I'm sorry to report that despite months-long nationwide protest, Poland's widely restrictive abortion law went into effect. And though we already covered this law before, I feel like I should remind you that even before this change, it was damn near impossible to get an abortion in Poland. In fact, their laws are so restrictive that only 1,100 abortions were performed all of last year. That's in a country of nearly 40 million. Like, as restrictive as we are in the U.S., we still have more than 100 times as many abortions per capita. Now, of those 1,100 cases last year, 1,074 were because of fetal abnormality. That's one of the few acceptable reasons left in the country, or at least it was before this bullshit new law went into effect. They were already 100 times more restrictive than the U.S., and now they've gotten 50 times more restrictive. And I'm no expert in Polish politics, of course, but as near as I can tell, this is exactly what a country looks like when you get a Donald Trump that actually means all the right-wing bullshit he says to fire up his base. And that's an important thing to consider when the GOP nominates somebody like Mike Pompeo or Mike Pence in a few years. But after news like that, I owe you something a bit more uplifting. And if you need a smile these days, you're never very far from a new video from a pissed-off evangelical pastor who's very unhappy that they don't still have their bigot president. And we got that this week in the form of Pastor Steve Swarford. And if that name rings a bell, it's going to be because he made the news for ignoring allegations of sexual abuse by a former youth pastor in the 90s. And since that's what passes for a moral authority in Christian circles, he's still at the pulpit. And he's got himself a fun little pet name for our vice president, Jezebel Harris. So here's the quote in all of its narrow-minded glory. Quote, now we're going to have a newly elected cognitively dysfunctional president. And what if something happens to him? Then Jezebel has to take over. Jezebel Harris, isn't that her name? So, quick reminder, if it's been a while since your last Bible study, Jezebel was Ahab's wife, and she instituted worship of pagan gods on a national scale. And the part where she gets thrown out of a window and trampled to death for being an uppity bitch is evangelicals' favorite part of the Bible to jack off to. Needless to say, it's their go-to insult for any woman with power. Perhaps it doesn't occur to them that what they're saying is Kamala Harris could whip their religion's ass if she wanted. And last but not least, look, I've got to admit, it can be tough to choose an arch nemesis, especially in my line of work. There are so many good choices, and there's so much pressure to choose the right one. But despite all the commitment that goes with it, I chose Lori Alexandra as my arch nemesis years ago, and I've never regretted it. Pretty much any time I'm looking for an extra story for my segment, I can drop in with Lori and, sure enough, she'll have just posted a video about how it's okay to hit children with sticks. Well, to be fair, she didn't say stick. She said wooden spoon. But really, that's just a specific shape of stick. And of course, as Lori's arch nemesis, I feel like it's incumbent upon me to do whatever the opposite of her advice is. But as near as I can tell, the opposite of hitting a kid with a spoon is stabbing Lori Alexander with a fork. And considering that Andrew got all sweaty when I asked him about it, I think we'll have to wait on that one. And while I wait, I'll hand you back over to Noah and Eli.